Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be back again with the Word of God. Pastor Barbara Abraham from Solid Rock Apostolic Faith Church. God bless you. Amen. Amen. All right. And today we're going to switch our lesson. And next week, God be willing, we'll go back to finish off our prior lesson. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we're coming for you, Lord, right now. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We ask you that you will send forth a rain with word, that you will touch the ears of the hearers, cause them to hear and receive the word of God. Give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding thereof. Have the mind to be made up, O oh God, to live according to your will. Let us take the word of God and hide in our hearts, that we may not sin against thee. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Today, we're going to be in the book of Hebrews Hebrews, the 12th chapter, verse 1 through 11. Amen. And we're talking about as followers of Christ. All right. There are some things that we must do as followers of Christ. Amen. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. As followers of Christ, the word of God is telling us Seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud, amen, of witnesses, all right? There's a whole lot of people, amen, that have gone through for the cause of Christ, amen? The old patriarchs, amen, prior to Christ is coming, uh, prophets, amen, that have suffered, Amen. For the cause of the Lord. Amen. And then, of course, amen, the disciples, the apostles, and the saints of God, amen, after Christ came and suffered and died on Calvary's cross. Amen. We realize that the church went through, amen, a whole lot of suffering. Amen. A whole lot of suffering. All right, we think we're suffering. But this year that we go through today has really not been anything compared to what they went through. And I'm talking about most of us today because there are some people that are actually suffering greater than what we have suffered here. And I will say in America. I mean, people are still losing their lives in other countries um, right now, amen, because of the cause of Christ, because they refuse amen, to deny him, amen, they have chosen to be a follower of the Lord, now what we have to understand, first of all, is Jesus himself said uh, to the people, amen, any man that cometh unto me, let him deny himself, all right, self-denial, amen, we can deny other people sometimes, and we can deny other things, but when it comes down to denying me, denying self, then it gets to be a little harder, amen, or a lot harder for us to deny ourselves, amen, of the things that make us feel comfortable. And that's what I want to say. And that's really what I want to talk about too. All right, it's the feeling of comfortability. We don't like to be uncomfortable, amen. And if we had to choose, we would always choose to be comfortable, Amen. But walking with the Lord and being a follower, amen, follower, coming behind him, going in the same direction that he is leading you in, amen, follower, amen. We're going to follow him. We're coming behind him. We are allowing him to direct our path, amen. We're not trying to go in a different direction. Amen. Because if you go in a different direction, then you are not a follower. You can't follow someone and go in a different direction in which they are going in. Amen. In order to follow them, 
you go in the same direction that they are going in. Amen. The same direction. So that's how we also know whether we're following Christ or we're not following Christ. Amen. Just because we got saved, we got saved, doesn't mean that we are still yet following Christ. Amen. This is an everyday 24-7 choice. We must make a conscientious choice to follow the Lord every single day, 24-7. And you and I both know that the devil is on our track trying to turn us back, trying to persuade us to go in another direction. Amen. Trying to get us not to follow the Lord. Amen. But we have to make up our mind. Amen. And we can really make it up once and for all. Um, but every day it is a choice, we can say. But if you make your mind up, really make your mind up, the next day you already know what the choice is going to be. It's going to be the same thing. Uh, the songwriter said, I'll take Jesus for mine. I'll take Jesus for mine. You can have this whole wide world, but I'll take Jesus for mine. And that's how I feel. I will take Jesus for mine. My heart is fixed. My mind is made up to follow the Lord until the end. All the way till the end. I'm going to follow him till the end. Amen. All the way into eternity. So there's no end in that. Amen. So we're just going to follow and follow and follow. Amen. The best person that we could possibly follow. Amen. We're going to turn our eyes toward the Lord. And we want to keep our eyes stayed on him. Stayed on him. And then as we see him, we want to do like because he is our perfect perfect example amen you're not gonna find anyone on this earth hallelujah including your pastor or your bishop or whatever apostle they call that's what they have the title of apostle amen they're not you're not going to be able to follow them amen and they just have this totally fit lifestyle about them now i'm not saying they're sinning because you know you need to overcome that amen but you will find some type of flaw in human beings uh just a mistake on something we make mistakes you know what i'm saying the lord himself is the one that is perfect the bible said he is perfect in all of his ways oh my god and there is no shadow of turning with him you know i'm so glad that he doesn't change he doesn't change. Isn't that wonderful? He doesn't change. The Bible declares that he is the same, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He doesn't change. The only consistent at all times. All right? Morning, noon, night. He doesn't change. Sometimes we get fickle. You know, we up and we down in our emotional state and our thinking and uh, whatever it may be. You know, we feel one way one minute and another way in another minute. Amen. Those of you that's out there and that's going through menopause or pre-menopause, you know what I'm talking about. You can feel real happy right now. And in a couple minutes or seconds, you can feel down. Amen. That's because your hormones are going crazy. Amen. And they're putting you off balance. They are not stable. Amen. But the Lord is already stable. He is fixed. You can lean on him. You can trust in him. You can depend on him. Amen. He will not change up on you. And I'm so glad about that. He's dependable. You don't have to wonder, I don't know how you're going to be today. I don't know. You know, how you going to be? You know, some people you got to wonder. You know, they made what they say they got up on the wrong side of the bed. You know, you got to wonder how they're going to be today. Yesterday, they might have been okay, but today, woo You know, like, Lord have mercy, what went on with them? They don't even know what went on with them. Nothing went on with them. You know, they just woke up in a certain way and went with it. My Lord have mercy. Amen. We can't be just going with stuff, but I'm just saying some people just that way. Do you know they woke up, they say they woke up on the wrong side of the bed. And it's only supposed to be two sides, you know, the left and the right. Where's the wrong? You know, where's the wrong side? But they say they woke up on the wrong side of the bed and they just carry a chip on their shoulder throughout the day. Lord, don't want nobody to speak to them. And see, that's how the devil is. That's how the devil is.
wake up you can wake up in one frame of mind with one frame of spirit amen and if you in that spirit right now you need to rebuke the devil amen that had a hold of you all day long because that is not of the lord that is not of the Lord. You walking around, you don't want nobody to speak to you. You acting it out. You go on the job. They say good morning. Mm. That's what you doing. Mm. How you doing? I'm here. What that mean? Praise God, you're here. Thank the Lord, you're here. Hallelujah. Above ground. You're not six feet under. As a whole lot of people that wish they could be here. Amen. So it's always something to give God glory for and to give God the praise for. Always. Always. So here he said, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us, let us. See, we had to do something too. You know, we done heard the word of God and we've listened and we've heard and we've watched, you know, different things pertaining to the word of God and you know we know amen about the old uh old patriarchs we know about the disciples and the apostles amen the followers of Christ what they endured and what they had to do and we know how the word of God constrains us amen to in order to be a follower of the Lord we have got to let go of our selfish ways things about self that God is just not pleased with. Amen. If we're going to put ourselves above his word, amen, and we're going to put ourselves, amen, above the things that Christ would have us to do, amen, then we are not being followers of Christ. You can't say you're following Christ when you won't obey the word of God. The Bible said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will of God. And that was a talking about Jesus. That was talking about Jesus. So when Jesus, amen, came down to the final analysis of the fact, amen, that it's now time for you to go to the cross, he said, well, what should I say, you know? Because it's already written. Should I say, deliver me from this hour? Now, yes, he did go amen, in the garden and pray and listen and understand how he prayed, how he prayed, not just what he prayed, but how the manner in which he prayed. When he sought the father, he, he talked to the father and he said, now, if it's possible, if there's a way around this, you know, let this cup pass. But he basically knew there wasn't no way around it. It's already written. So if it's already written, it's already settled in heaven. But of course, he did not, humanity did not want to be crucified on that cross. For several reasons, he did not want to be crucified. He was going to face the ultimate suffering. The ultimate suffering. He was going to taste death for every man. For every man, he was going to taste death. Amen. He had to become sin. He had to become sin. He didn't become a sinner. He became sin, the Bible says, for us. Sin. So he had to go through something that you and I will never go go through amen all because he was standing as a ransom for you and i taking our place of judgment he who knew no sin became sin the bible said for us that he became sin are we still charging yeah excuse me he became sin for us that's something great right there that he did for you and for us. And so he could go to that length so that we could be saved and so that we could be delivered, amen, out of the bondage of sin and brought out of darkness into his marvelous light. Such a little thing is required of us. And the Bible said, 
Seeing that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Number one, lay aside the things that are weighing you down, that keeps you from pursuing the Lord as you are to pursue the Lord. Give up some of that television time in front of the TV for hours on end and can't get a prayer in. Now, my recommendation is this. I find this to be a better way and more suitable for myself is to get up earlier in the morning. That way you've talked to the Lord, you've spent time with the Lord, you've had devotions with the Lord. Pray, talk to God, listen for his voice, amen. Read the word of God, amen. And you can take some time to meditate on the word of God and allow God to speak to you through his word. Hallelujah. And when you're praying, don't just blah, 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 and just keep on talking. Give God a chance to talk to you. You got to stop at some point and try to st still yourself and listen to hear the voice of God as he speaks unto you. I, after all, I would say it should be a two-way conversation. Hallelujah. And I know people, what people got to say. Some people say, God, don't talk and all that and all that. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, maybe he doesn't talk to them that often. But if we look at it, he's supposed to be our father. Amen. So therefore, we should have a relationship with him. We should have two-way communication with him. Amen. It is no more than the Lord simply telling you today that he loves you. And that he is with you. Who says that he has to have this long, drawn-out conversation? The fact that he is with you is enough to carry you through. Hallelujah, the entire day. And some other days too as well. Amen. So we, will, we should want to sit down and talk to our God. Talk to our Father. Talk to even our friend. Amen. Amen. We can be a friend of God. He's willing to be your friend. And he will get as close to you as you want him to get. Sometimes the problem is this. People don't get close enough. They don't want to be that close. And of course, if you already have the mindset that the Lord is not really going to do much speaking, um, uh, speaking to you, then when will he really speak to you? Because you're not even going to get quiet and still before him. So that he can have communication with you on a daily basis. And yes, part of the word of God, I know somebody might be saying right now, that's what the word of God is for. Amen. The word of God is for communication as well. But he still speaks to his people. Amen. Listen, Adam and Eve was in the garden. They were in the garden of Eden. And the Bible said that the voice of the Lord walked through the garden in the cool of the day. Amen. Do you not think that God met with them every day? Or do you think he only met with them once in a while? Now, I have to believe that if he can meet with them every day, amen, and if Jesus gave us our rights back, then he would talk to us every day as well. Hallelujah. I bless his holy name. I am so glad that I realize that we do not have a God. The Bible talks about Jesus in this light. Listen. We have not an high priest that is not able to be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. Uh-huh, but he was tempted at all points, yet as we, all right, but he never sinned. Tempted, but without sin. All right, so the Lord understands when you're dealing with situations, you're dealing with problems. He knows how it feels to be tired in your body. Amen. He knows how it feels to... Just really want to collapse. He, he knows. He knows. And so he can relate. He can relate on every level. Now, yes, there are some things that Jesus did not go through in the sense of uh, uh, particulars. But he went through every last stage of everything. The lust of the eye. The lust of the flesh. And the pride of life. Because those are the only temptations that we get. 
They come in various ways, but we all have to go through them and, uh, 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 and, and overcome them. Amen? As followers of Christ. Jesus said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. Amen. I've overcome the world. So if he overcame the world, so can we. If we follow him. All right. In the way that we're going to follow him, first of all, we, we need to lay down some weight. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I don't know what your weight may be. I don't know what your weight may be. I talked about the television. You need to stop watching so much TV. I'm telling you again, I told you before, TV is not the best thing for you. And all this stuff, all this junk they have on TV, I rarely watch actually regular TV. Because it's junk. There's a bunch of junk on there. And what, 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 what is it going to do for you? What good will it do for you? And then it has so much crazy stuff on there now, like, Lord, have mercy. Now they're they putting so much stuff in there that's so ungodly, almost in every kind of picture you see, they throwing some stuff up in there. Amen? Because they're trying to brainwash the people to tolerate these kinds of things. Amen? So they're just putting stuff on there that just ought not to be on TV. I mean, back in the day, and I will say back in the day, some stuff they wouldn't even had on TV. They wouldn't even really had cursing. The cursing they do on TV now, like what? Good grief! All this sex having on TV. They didn't used to have that stuff on TV like that. My goodness! Back in the day, Lucy and, and her husband they were sleeping in separate beds. Now they, Lord have mercy, they just all over each other doing Lord knows what in the bed. And you know what they're doing. You, they showing it to you just about, except for the covers are not off. But you know what's going on. That's the way it is today. And some of this stuff we need not allow our children to be watching. Their eyes don't need to see this stuff because this stuff is going to get right in their spirits. The Bible said train a child in the way they should go. Amen. That's not the way they should go. They watching wrong kind of stuff, pumping it into that spirit being. And then when they start getting fast and all that, we want to fuss at them and beat them. Well, why do you think they fast? Sometimes it's because you let them watch that stuff on TV. And now you want to beat them. That's your fault. No child should be watching somebody underneath covers doing some stuff that God knows children had no business seeing. And that stuff going right, dropping right down in their spirit. Amen. Some things, that's another thing we need to lay aside if we letting our children watch the wrong kind of stuff on TV. We need to start monitoring um, what they watch on TV better. And God knows the internet these children got these cell phones. It's time that we start tapping into these cell phones. Amen. And that we, we set some, um, some things up in these cell phones. So that these children can't go to certain websites and, and, and explore certain things. Because there's some stuff out there where they're hunting your children. The predators are out there. And they're looking for these children. Trying to find an inroad to these children. We need to lay aside every weight. Amen. And it is a weight if it hinders you from coming closer to the Lord. If you're being hindered from coming to closer to the Lord, I don't care if it's your friend. Amen. If it's your friend, if it's your friend and they talk to you for hours on the phone every day and you can't pray, what you need to do is say, hey, why don't we take some of this time and have some prayer? And we can pray together in Jesus' name. Now, I don't mean we talking about people, but we can pray together. All right? We can pray together and have prayer requests. Let's pray for this saint, you know. Let's pray for that. Don't be telling nobody's personal business either. Don't be doing that. But if, if y'all know certain things are going on, amen. And you don't even have to know certain things are going on. Just pray for the person. Pray for them. Pray for their family. Pray for their children. You know, pray for their relatives. Pray for your church. Pray for your pastors. Pray for your bishops. Pray, pray, pray. There's so much to pray for. I mean, there's people out here on the street. They need prayer. 
People are dying in their sins. They need prayer. Drug addicts, they need prayer. Alcoholics, they need prayer. Pedophiles, they need prayer too. Amen. Everybody need prayer. The rapists, they need prayer. Murderers, they need prayer. Everybody needs some prayer. Everybody. The righteous need prayer. The unrighteous need prayer. Amen. The backslider need prayer. Everybody needs some prayer. Amen. So when you get through with your friend, let's say let's pray. Amen. Because it's too much time wasted on those cell phones and on house phones if you got a house phone anymore. Because a lot of people have got rid of their house phones because they got cell phones. Amen. But on that cell phone or that house phone, you need to say, hey, we'd be spending three, four hours on the phone. Why don't we use some of this time to pray? And don't be talking about the five, 10, 15 minutes to pray. And then y'all running down everybody in the church for three or four hours. The devil is a liar. If anything, you need to get off that phone. If that's all you can do is talk about people. Because that's back biting and the Bible talks against that. You're not supposed to be trying to turn nobody down. Uh-uh. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Love your neighbor as yourself. And would you want somebody to run you down? So if you don't want nobody to run you down to the ground, then don't run them down to the ground. And that's all you're doing. Everybody wrong. The pastor's wrong. The bishop's wrong. The elder's wrong. The the, the, the little babe is wrong. And except you. Now that's something. If everybody wrong in the church and you the only one that's right. Isn't it? Then maybe we need to do some self-examination. And we need to lay some weights to the side. And the sin. And the sin. Which do it so easily. Listen. 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 Sin easily besets you. Uh-huh. It holds you back. It surrounds you and keeps you from moving forward. It said easily. Uh-huh. See, see, the devil understands that sin is the come-between thing. Between you and your God. Between you and your Savior. You've got to get rid of sin if you're going to follow the Lord. You can't follow the Lord and sin at the same time because he doesn't sin. And so there's no need of saying I'm following Jesus when you're setting up a storm or if you're sinning a little bit. All sin will carry you to hell in case you didn't know that. You know, because we want to make some sin, big sin, little sin. I just told a little white lie. A lie, honey, you lied. And the Bible said all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. Now, is God lying or are you lying? All liars. All liars. The white liars, the black liars, all liars. I'm talking about you just do a little white lie. No, that lie was a black lie. That, that was a dirty lie. Yeah, uh -huh. I was just trying to get somebody out of trouble. All right. All liars shall have their part in the lake of fire. And it describes it that burn it with fire and brimstone. And I'm being told that brimstone is like a suffocation matter. It will suffocate you. So imagine, y'all, you listen. Now, some people know something about it because they done had COVID. And they had to go the hard way. And they say, you know, it's hard to breathe. So imagine suffocating and burning at the same time. You can't catch your breath and you in flames being tormented. Forever. That's a miserable state to be in. That's why we ought to understand that sin is just not worth it. Sin is not worth it. For a moment of pleasure that is going to take you into an eternity where you're going to suffer throughout the entire eternity. That's crazy. There's no comparison right there to me. You, there, there's no comparison. There is no pleasure in this world 
worth suffering for eternity. Throughout an entire eternity. That's crazy. You want to send that bad? You need, to, you need to rethink that. You need to rethink that and you need to rethink that right now. That little bit of pleasure that you're getting, honey, is not going to be nothing in comparison to the suffering that you're going to receive. And why are you going to receive it? Because you're rejecting the Lord. When you reject his word, you are rejecting him. When you deny his will in your life, you are rejecting him. And I don't care what you say about it, because it's the truth. It's called rejection. It's called rejection. The Lord, when he talked about Saul and his disobedience to him, and he's talking about it as he did it. And then the Lord said, because, because he didn't do it. He didn't do what he was supposed to do. He didn't do what I said. And then therefore, I rejected him from being king. Because he rejected the word of God. So God rejected him from being king. So if we reject the will and the word of God, he will reject us from coming to heaven. Why should he allow us to come to his heaven that's made for righteous folk that's been living right that have been washed in the blood of the lamb and he gonna let whoever want to come up there talk about they called on the name of the Lord and that's why they say and don't have nothing to do with the fact whether they sin it or they not sin it cause this has been pumped up in their heads and they thinking that uh, because they believe the Lord Jesus Christ and that they, you know, they're supposed to be saved and they can just sin and, and oh well, they saved anyhow. Paul said, at least after I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway. I want God casting me away. I don't want him telling the angel to bind me hand and foot and cast me into the lake of fire. Oh no. There is nothing, do you hear me? Absolutely nothing and nobody, nobody worth going to hell for and going to burn in a lake of fire. Absolutely not. But we need to think beyond that. There is nobody worth losing your relationship with God for. See, this ought to be the, the motivation. Not because you don't want to go to hell. And not because you don't want to go to the lake of fire, in which we should not want to. I know I don't want to go. But the driving force should be the love that we have toward the Father. And for that cause, we should be willing to lay aside every weight and the sin. Stop the sinning. Stop the sinning. Now, if you're a sinner and you have not been saved, Amen. Then you need to ask God to save you. You can ask him to save you right where you are. He can fill you with the tongue talking Holy Spirit right now in that seat. Amen. Or wherever you are. He can fill you with the Holy Spirit right now. He's able to do it. Hallelujah. And receive you the Holy Ghost. Receive it. In Jesus' name. Amen. And, and, and listen. So whether you be a sinner, he's waiting to save you. But if you're someone that had been saved already then you need to be laying aside every weight and the sin because he is really talking to the church this is an epistle a letter that's written to the church yes the people that already been down in jesus name and been filled been filled been filled with the holy spirit and that's supposed to be walking upright before the lord supposed to be but are choosing to go the wrong direction. It wouldn't be in the Bible if people weren't choosing to go the wrong direction. The Bible is written for our example, the Bible said. For an example to us. It is speaking to us. It is telling us how to live according to the word of God. How to follow the leader, which is Christ Jesus. Amen. And the leadership that is over you. Paul said, follow me even as I follow Christ. Amen. First, the leader needs to be following Christ. 
And I'm coming to tell you right now, if the leader is not following Christ, you may be needing to find yourself another place to go. Because they lead you in the wrong direction. Excuse me. They leading you in the wrong direction if you're following after them. Uh-huh. And they sinning. And so that's all right. You sinning, they sinning, everything's okay because everybody's sinning. The devil is a liar. That's not the word of God. That's not what the word taught us to do. We have to practice what we preach and teach. We got to live this thing out. We got to walk this thing out before the people. How can, why are you called the leader? You're supposed to do the leading. They're supposed to do the following. I'm sorry. I got to tell you the truth. You are not a leader or a leader to lead the people in the right direction if you are going in the wrong direction. Because you already know people usually follow what they see. Amen. That's how children do. They follow what they see. So if the people are supposed to be sheep and if the sheep is following the leader... And if the leader is sinning, then the people will feel as though it's okay for them to do likewise. And therefore, the blood of the people will be on the leader's hands. Listen, listen, time out for all this crazy stuff. I'm hearing it more and more, and it's sickening to me, and it really gets on my nerves. And I'm just telling you the truth. I'm sick and tired of hearing these preachers say this crazy stuff. Using it as an excuse for why they're not living like the Bible said. Because the Holy Ghost empowers us to do the will of God. And he expects us to live the word. And we're using cop-outs. Talking about, oh, well, I'm still doing this. And I said, some stuff is just like a shocker. Like, are you serious? What do you mean? What do you mean? I'm still trying to stop lying. What do you mean I'm still cursing? What do you mean? And you're a leader. Well, maybe you need to sit down for a while. I don't want you to be my leader. If you can't live right. Because you're supposed to be showing me how to live right. You're supposed to be an example of the word that you're preaching and teaching. And I'm not saying that we don't have some faults. I'm not saying that, that we don't have some shortcomings. But when the Lord points out the faults and the shortcomings then we need to straighten that stuff out and don't keep walking and don't be trying to make no excuse just because you're doing something you know you don't have no business doing so you're going to make it okay for everybody else. The devil is a liar. You're wrong. And you need to admit the fact that you're wrong. Don't try to make that okay because you're doing it. God ain't changing his word because you're doing it. The word is still right. It's against you if you're doing wrong and it doesn't matter who you are. From the high to the low. Nobody is above this book. I'm not above this book. If I don't do right, this book is against me. And I might as well agree to the book. Well, it's whether you agree with it or not, you're going to be judged by it. It's time to just get yourself together. Get your mind together and start walking right before the Lord. You need to repent. You may need to go to your own leadership. Preferably, you got somebody over you to go off to. To talk with. You know, you may need somebody to counsel with you. Because sometimes, you know, pastors don't go nowhere to get no counsel from nobody. Because they think they got to be so strong or, or whatever. And nobody knows that, you know, I'm weak in this area or I'm dealing with a situation and I need some help. Can you at least pray for me, you know? Pray with me, fast with me, or whatever the case is. And they're not getting no help. And the enemy is just browbeating you. And turn you apart. And you holding stuff that you should be releasing and letting go. And laying it aside. It puts you in a bad place if you ain't got nobody to go to. You ain't nobody to help you. And I'm not talking about, oh, I'll just go to Jesus. No, he got some people down here too. That's supposed to be helping you a long way. And I'm so glad, you know, that we're in an organization where there are hierarchies of people that we can go to and talk to if you have a problem. You don't, I'm not talking about sin, but if you if you got to deal with some sin, then you need to go talk to somebody. But you have other 
issues in your life. And you should be able to sit down and have a conversation with somebody to have some wisdom. The Bible said there is safety in the multitude of counselors. But if you don't have no counselor, then you're not being safe. You're not safe. You're all by yourself trying to do it. You need somebody to help you out. So I don't know who I'm talking to. You know who you are. God know who you are. Because you right, you right here. And he's trying to help you. You need somebody to help you. And if you don't have it in your own personal organization, you need to seek for some help somewhere where somebody can listen to you and what you're dealing with in your life, your life, because you're dealing with other people's lives, but somebody needs to be able to help you sometime. I'm not saying you're running them all the time, because you should have some strength now. You shouldn't have to be running to somebody all the time, all right, because you you're a leader, so you should have some kind of strength. But the time when you feel like, whoa, like I'm just getting a little kind of hard for me or heavy for me, you need to have somebody to talk to. Amen. So I really, I'm really, you know, I, my prayer is that God will bless you with the right people. Amen. Bless you with the right people that will understand. Amen. Amen. And that, that's not trying to uh, um, jack your life up or whatever the case may be, but will understand and be able to help you and speak life into you yet the more. You need those kinds of people. My Lord, you, you really do. You need those kinds of people. All right? All right? But make sure you get the right kind of people because you know the wrong kind of people. You don't want them. Amen. Because they might go a whole different way. So we need to be laying aside every weight in the sin that do it so easy to be set up. All right? We need to lay it to the side. Put it down. Stop doing it. Nothing should be more important to us. Nothing should be more important to us than our relationship with the Lord. Following the Lord. Going in his direction. Jesus took time out to pray and seek the Father. And none of us are better than Jesus. And you got to know, and I got to know, if Jesus prayed, we definitely need to pray. Good God in heaven. Because there's so much going on right now. Oh my God, I know it is in my life. It's a whole lot. There's a whole lot going on in the world, you know. And sometimes you're going, going through your own things that you got to go through in life, you know. You know, you got to go through what you got to go through. And amen, you better be hitting your knees talking to the Lord. He's the one that keeps you in perfect peace. I know he's the one that keeps me in perfect peace. Because I'd be the, I, I'd be the, went off, I'd be the, whoo. Well, cuckoo, for real. I'm just telling you the truth. I would not have no peace. If it wasn't for the Lord, I know how to call on the name of the Lord for some peace. And he gives me peace. The songwriter said, I try him and I know him. You, you hear me? I have tried him over and over again. And he has not failed me. He has not failed me. Hallelujah. I'm so glad I have a friend like Jesus. I am so, so glad. I can turn to the Lord. I'm so glad that I know I can talk to him. I'm so glad I know that he will communicate back to me. And I don't have to feel like, oh, he is so high and lifted up that he can't even relate to me. No, he can relate. He will relate. The Lord will condescend even down to a little child. My God, don't tell me what he won't do. Because I know he was talking to me when I was a child. God deals with children too. Oh, yes, he does. He deals with little children too. And he will talk to little children too. That's why we got to be careful. Oh, can't no little child tell me nothing. Well, that's the problem because you're looking at the little child and you're not looking at the God in the little child. That's using the little child. Because if God is speaking to the little child, it is no more the little child, but it is God talking to you. So you better listen to that little child or you will be rejecting the Lord that's trying to use the little child. See, we don't get to tell God who to use to help us. 
People do that, you know, and I be hearing people say different things, you know what I'm saying? Now, I can understand that the little child does not have some of the experiences in life that you have had. I do understand that. But we got to remember this is a spiritual thing. It's not, not a natural thing, so to speak. Now, yes, sometimes you know somebody has experienced what you have experienced, then you better relate to them. But when God himself is using this individual to talk to you, I don't care who it is. That ain't them. That's God talking. You better open your ears and hear what thus saith the Lord, and you don't pick and choose who he's going to use to talk to you. All right? And for those that be saying that stuff, let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something else. They can't talk to me because they didn't do this and they haven't done that. They haven't been there, they haven't done that. They can't tell me nothing. Oh, they can't tell me. They can't tell me. Well, then, Jesus can't tell you nothing either. As a matter of fact, God can't tell you nothing. Because he ain't never sinned. He never did any of that stuff that you did. And what some of you are currently doing right now. The Lord has never done it. So, the Lord can't tell you nothing. Because he never did it. When Jesus was down here walking the face of the earth, he didn't do that stuff. He was never strung out on drugs. He was never. He, he was never an alcoholic. Never. He never committed fornication, adultery, none of those sins. He never did it. He wasn't no liar. He didn't do any of it. Any sins that, that's on your list, Jesus did none of them. So are you saying that he can't talk to you? Because he can't, he can't relate. The relating is not always necessarily with the same thing that you did. It is with the three things, the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. And even if somebody have not encountered those things, which they will, even if they had not encountered those, when God speaks, God speaks. And God has continuously used individuals that have not done the things that the other people were doing to tell them to stop doing it. So that has nothing to do with it. Stop saying stuff like that. You're rejecting God. And he may not see nobody else to tell you. So if you keep rejecting a person that God is using to tell you because you say, oh, they don't know because they never did it. They never been there. You keep rejecting them. You're going to end up in hell because God ain't going to tell nobody else to come talk to you. He not get nobody else to come talk to you but the person he's telling to talk to you. Now you better have an ear and open your ear real wide to hear what the Lord says and stop looking at that person because it's not them, it's God. God is talking to you. I advise you to have an open ear and listen. Lay aside every weight and the sin that do it so easily be settled and let us run. See, you gotta get, you gotta get in a hurry with this thing. Some people are slow walking and they taking their time. All right, I'm going to do it, boy. I'm not ready yet. I'm going to lay it aside in a while. I'm going to stop sinning in a while. It's hard. It's hard. It's, just, it's hard to give it up. It's just, it's just hard. I'm telling you it's hard. Who said it wasn't going to be hard or difficult? But it's a whole lot easier when you really want to do the will of the Lord. And I don't want to be in sin. So it, it shouldn't be that hard for you. If you don't want to be, if you don't want to see, the problem is you still want it. And you don't want to deny yourself of it. And you need to be asking God, Lord, I, I really don't want to want this. And be truthful to him if you do, if you want it, and the contrary to his will. Ask the Lord to create a clean heart in you and renew a right spirit within you to help you have godly desires. Now, yes, that stuff in our flesh, and that stuff will come to the surface because you walk and you, you have the flesh. Not that you're walking in it because you shouldn't. But we all have the flesh, and this thing wants to be catered to. So, yes, it rises up, and it fights us, and it talks us, and tells us what it want to have. But our job is to kill it out, crucify it. With the word of God. So yes. The, the flesh. 
has desires against the will of God. But the inner man, your spirit being man, should desire the will of God. That's what you should be going after. And that's why you make yourself your flesh. Lay aside the stuff that God is not pleased with. Because you want to follow the Lord. Run with patience. The race that is set before you. Well, why I got to do it with patience? Because everything is not going to happen in a time that you want it to happen. Uh-uh. So you're going to have to have some patience. You know, sometimes people want to be 100 overnight. And I can understand that. But it doesn't come overnight. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Steps. Step one, step two, step three, step four. Steps. You move from one thing to another thing, to another thing, to another thing. Progression. But keep pressing forward. Keep pressing forward. Don't give up. Don't give in. Keep pressing forward. Press into the Lord. Press into the Lord. Press into the Lord. Even the more, the harder it is. Press in more. Press. You gotta press. We gotta press our way. If we think we're going to heaven on a fly bed, we can just forget it. It will not be a flower bed of ease. I'm coming to tell you now. The Bible has declared that we are going to suffer. This flesh is going to suffer. He that has suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. That's the only way you're going to cease from it. And you're going to have to make yourself, your flesh suffer. Because it's going to suffer when you tell it no. When, say, when you tell it no, you ain't doing against the will of God. No, you're not going there. No, you're not going to say that. No, you're not going to think like that. No, you're not going to respond in that manner. The flesh don't like it. It wants to do what it wants to do. When it wants to do it and how it wants to do it. And it don't want to worry about the consequences. Because the flesh is stupid. Your flesh, my flesh, and everybody else's flesh. Forgive me if I'm offending you, but it's true. The flesh is stupid. And if you obey it, it's going to take you right to hell. And it don't matter what the title is. You're going to go there. All right? Because some of everything going to be in hell. Some of everything going to be in hell. Because it refused to lay aside every weight and the sin that they're so easy beside it. And run with patience. you got to have some patience. Without the murmuring and complaining. Run with patience. And I'm not saying you can't talk about your situation. That's all right. But if you start complaining about it, Why the Lord let me go through this? They ain't even right to go and let me go through this. Ain't nobody else going through this. God always has a purpose for whatever his people endure. And we have to get that mindset to understand. It's not always easy now. But we have to get that mindset to understand that in everything, God has a purpose. And that's why the word of God can tell us in everything, give thanks. For everything, give thanks. It says it both, both, both ways. And you might be saying, well, Lord, have mercy. I'm having the worst thing ever in my life. How in the world am I going to tell God thank you for that? Tell him thank you because he already foresaw it. He already foresaw it. Whatever you may be dealing with, the Lord have already foreseen it. And it's going to work out for you good. He got something great in store for you. So you might as well throw your hands up and tell the Lord thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he knows what's best for you. He knows what's best for you. And I just got to love him. I just got to love him. I just got to love him. I'm telling you the truth. Because he always going to make sure it works out for the best. Whatever it is. That's, that's the wonderful thing about the Lord. You hear me? The wonderful thing. That's one of the wonderful things about the Lord. So we run with patience. Uh, the race that is set before us. Because we have a race. Everybody. All of us have a race that we run. And it's set before us. Amen. And there are obstacles on in this race. On, on that uh, racetrack. Amen. Sometimes you got to jump over some hurdles. Uh-huh. 
but keep on running, honey. Keep on running. And let me tell you, sometimes the devil is running right beside you and trying to trip you up at the same time. Amen. The Bible said, watch and pray. You got to watch out for the enemy. Because he's going about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Amen. He's looking for somebody to destroy. But you just got to make sure that it don't be you. You need to let the devil know. You might be getting some other people. But what you're not going to do is get me. I know you after me. But you're not going to get me. Because I'm running for the Lord. Looking and looking unto Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith. So listen, he is the beginning. He's the author, the starter, the originator of our faith. That's who we're going to look to. Uh-huh. Lay it aside the weight and the sin that's holding us back, that's keeping us from pursuing the Lord, that's keeping us from following the Lord as we are to follow him. And we're going to look to Jesus, the one that we're following. Because he started this thing. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. It starts with him and it ends with him. You know how people say the buck stops here? Well, the buck stops with him. Hallelujah. Everything is riding on him. So you look to him. The songwriter said, look to Jesus Christ and it is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. That you only have to look and live. You got to look to him and you will live if you look toward him and you follow him. He came to give us life and that more abundantly. That's what he said out of his own mouth. He said, I came to give you life. And that more abundantly. Abundance of life. You got to look to him though. I have to look to him. Because that's the only way we're going to live. See if we take our eyes off the Lord. Then we'll begin to shrivel up. And we'll begin to die. And the adversary knows that. So that's how he tries to distract us. From our focusing on the Lord. Amen. Because listen, listen, listen. You can be going in the right direction. Mm-hmm. You can be going in the right direction, but if you take your eyes off, what normally happens is you will begin to veer off, not even knowing that you're veering off. And that's why the enemy tries to keep you distracted from the word of God, from reading the word, from listening to the word of God, from hearing the word of God, amen, from keeping your focus on the Lord. So that you can walk up rightly before him. The enemy tries to distract you with problems and situations and conditions. And he tries to just trouble your spirit and trouble your mind so much. Amen. Till you take your eyes off of the Lord and you start looking at the situations. Amen. And, 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 and time and time again, we have to draw our minds back in to the word of God. We have to think, Woo, Lord, am I getting my mind? My mind is just on this all day. You, you know, no, you got to let the devil know. No, no, no. I'm not keeping my mind on this, this stuff that's trying to distract me. I'm putting my mind back on the Lord. He can handle the problems, the situation. He already know that they are going on. But in the meantime, I'm going to walk on this water. So you got to be like Jesus tried to get Peter to do. Amen. The water was already bolsterous and all of that. It was already, the waves were already going crazy. Before Peter stopped out of the ship. And Jesus is going toward the ship. And Peter says, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee. On the water. And Jesus says to him, come on. And Peter gets out of the ship. With the water already being disturbed. He's walking on the water. But then he starts looking at the water instead of staying focused on Jesus. And that's when he began to sink. And that's why we got to grab a hold to our minds and put our minds back in the right places. Right place because once we take our mind, our mind off the Lord and start focusing on what we're dealing with and our problems and adversities and testing, trials and tribulations, 
all this is coming and happening to me. And we just focusing on that. And we just go through the day and we focusing on that. We lay down with it. We wake up with it. We go out the day with it. Amen. And our focus is not on the Lord. We began to sink. And the enemy is just waiting for us to totally go under the water and hoping that we drown. Put your focus back on Jesus. Forget about what's going on around you. That's God's problem. He's going to work that out. And anything part that he wants you to do in it, you do that part and you leave the rest to the Lord. And you have peace. It is the will of God that you have peace. Because he is peace. And the devil ought to bring disturbance and disruption and chaos. And he want to mess your mindset up. Mess your spirit up. Get you all out of whack. Draw your mind back into focusing on the Lord. Focusing back on the Lord. Look at unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Listen. Who for the who for the joy? Who, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For the joy of it. Who for the joy that was set before him. See, you gotta see you, you gotta see the other side of through. Stop saying just the fact that you gotta go through. But see what's shallow. You gotta shanamo shata. You gotta look and see what's on the other side of through. Something good is waiting for you on the other side of through. Something good is waiting for you on the other side of through, but you got to get through. But you, God wants you to focus on that, the joy that was set before him. He understood that, see, I got to go through this cross. I got to go through this blood, this cross. My blood being shed on Calvary. And I'm going to I'm dying for the sins of an entire world. So that I can save mankind from their sins. So that they may not go to a crisis grave and end up in hell. And he had joy, 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 great joy that was set before him. So he endured the cross, despising the shame. And now he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. One day we'll get our crown. If we go through if we lay aside the weight and the sins that do it so easy to be set up, we'll get our crown. Because we're going home one day too. And just as Christ has rose from the dead, amen, and the mortal put on immortality, the same thing is going to happen with you and I. And death is going to be swallowed up in victory. Amen. It's going to be swallowed up. There will be no more dying for us. Oh, no. No more dying, no more weeping, no more sorrows, no more heartache, no more pain. Oh, it's going to just be wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Just, oh, just great. It's just going to be great. It's something to look forward to. That's the joy on the other side of through. And you can make it through because the Lord is with you and he's going to help you to get through. That's the wonderful thing about it. Just think about that. Knowing that you're not alone, you're not by yourself. And even in the midst of your, your trials and all that you're going through, the Bible said that, you, you know, remember that your brethren are going through the same thing in this world. So you're not by yourself. All right? This thing is not just uh, to you and you alone on planet Earth. Like, really? Sometimes it seems like it, though. But just understand, somebody has suffered what you're going through and somebody has suffered worse than what you're going through. They dealt with it, and guess what? And they came out with the victory. So ain't no, it, it, there's no such thing that it can't be done because you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. For consider him, consider Jesus now, that endured such contradiction against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. So think about the Lord and what the Lord is doing. And, and I think about that sometimes. The Lord brings it back to my mind. When I'm going through my test and my trial, then he'll remind me of what he suffered. And when I think about what he suffered compared to what I suffered, it is not much. 
My suffering is not much compared to what he had to go through. You know what I'm saying? He suffered worse than I suffered. So, I just, you know, you got to just realize that you're not going through more than what Jesus went through. To save you. And to save me. He didn't even do anything. He didn't, didn't he did no wrong. The godly died for the ungodly. The just died for the unjust. My God. So he don't want you to be weary to think in your minds. And that's why we need to reflect upon the Lord when we're going through. And what he went through. So that we don't get weary like I'm just ready to give up. When we see what the Lord went through, we like, oh yeah, I, I, I can I can I can make it. This ain't no. You have not you have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Alright, so you know a lot of us have not been there. You know, nobody's kill, killing us and cutting heads off and you know all that, thank God. At least not right now. You never know what's gonna come. Amen. So prepare, prepare, prepare for whatever. And he said, And ye have forgotten the exaltation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. If you're going to be a follower of the Lord, then we need to be dear children unto him. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Don't, don't hate the chastening of the Lord. Don't talk against the chastening of the Lord. And don't give up when the Lord rebukes you. Oh, man, I just can't do nothing right. You know, that's what people do. Some people say, I can't do nothing but I quit. There's no time to be quitting, honey. This is far beyond time to be quitting. If you was going to quit, you should have quit before. Now? Oh, no. Oh, no. Too far in the game to quit. You should have been quit a long time ago and then got it right, hopefully. You know, there ain't no time to quit now. No. It's time to hold on to God with everything within you. Because the battle is on. Sure enough. Ha. Huh. It is on, it is on, it is on. And you have got to fight in this spiritual warfare. And we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and spiritual wickedness. And high places. That's what we wrestle with. Uh-huh. And a lot and, and some of those little demons, you know, sometimes we ain't wrestling with them little demons like we just like wrestling with the big ones. So when the Lord have to correct you and rebuke you, don't quit. I give up. Don't give up. That's what the devil wants you to do. Hang on in there. It's just like a father with a child. He must discipline them if they're doing something wrong. And correct them or rebuke them or whatever the case may be. And say, hey, no, why are you doing that? You shouldn't do that. Do this. Go this way. Don't go that way. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son. Whom he received. Alright, so he's going to correct you. If you're following him, he's going to correct your steps. He's going to correct you. Say, no, that's not the way I went. That's not the direction I took. You know, just like that little cliche, what would Jesus do? Now, that's what the Lord be saying. What would I have done? And if you didn't do what I would have done, then you didn't do it right. Uh-uh. Then you get, it, get the test again, you know, so you can do it right. And again, and again, and again, and again, and again. So do it right. Uh-huh. And sometimes the test might seem like the same test, but it's not for the same reason. Because it's something different that he's doing. Or whatever he's doing, let him do it. So that we can be everything that we're called to be. So that he can be glorified in us. Uh-huh. If you endure chastisement, God dealeth with you. As with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? 
So listen, so if the Lord is chastising you, rebuking you, setting you straight, then he's dealing with you as a child of his, as a follower of him. That's what, that's what your natural parents do. They chastise you, make sure you get on the right road. And if you're not doing that and you're a parent, shame on you. Shame on you. Because that's the way you help your children. You help them to have a better life when you train them to do the right thing. But if you refuse to train your children to do the right things, then you make them a child of hell. The Bible talks about that. So when they go to hell, you can pat yourself on the back. Because you didn't teach them the right way. And then you have to stand before God. And you, you can give an account on that behalf. Because we're supposed to raise our children in the fear and the admonition of the Lord. We're instructed to do that. Amen. But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, everybody else is partake of it, you not, then are ye bastards and not sons. You know, a bastard is an illegitimate child, you know, when the parents weren't married. Uh, and that those are the, that's what they call bastards. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. And shall we, and reverence, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Listen, if we obeyed our natural parents and we respected our natural parents, amen, and we took the chastising of our natural parents. Should not we even the more respect God and receive his chastisement? Amen. And don't murmur and complain against his chastisement. Amen. And respect the Lord. Now, I know some of us, you know, I'm like myself. When I was young, growing up, you know, my mom would get me, pop me, whatever the case may be. And, um... Tell me to go upstairs and go upstairs. Whatever the case, when I'm going upstairs, you know, you know, sometimes we you know we kind of mumble and stuff. You know, you might not be wanting them to hear because then you really going to get it. Yes, you know, I did do that. I got to admit it. You know, mm -hmm. you know, you be saying some stuff, but if they heard what you were saying, you might have a bloody lip. Wipe up right in the mouth. You know, that's what they did back in that, in the time, you know. I think some people probably use some of that now. But anyway, I'll do you. I'm not telling nobody to abuse no child. I'm not telling nobody to do that. So don't even say I wasn't told to abuse. I'm not in abuse. I'm in a, into correction, though. Because the Bible is into correction, not abuse. All right? So we have fathers after our, our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they rarely, for a few days, chastise us after their own pleasure in their manner to, for, for their purposes. But he, for our profit, when the Lord chastises us for his profit, Sometimes the parents might do it just because you got on their nerves, you made them mad. The real reason to chastise a child is not because they got on your nerves and made you mad, but it's because you're trying to correct them for a better life to be ahead of them, to, to help them. And, and it is helping them to respect you as well, but, you know, to help to form and shape their lives. Amen? So they can be better and upstanding citizens. For they really for a few days chastised us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit, that our, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Because if you're going to follow him, in order for you to follow him and be partaker of his holiness, amen, he got to set you in order, he got to set you right, he got to get things out of you that don't belong in you, amen, and that includes having you to lay aside the weights and the sins that do it so easy beside you. 
Now, no chastising for the present seems to be joyous. Don't nobody want to be corrected and definitely don't want to be eaten with that belt. Mm -mm. But grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, afterward, see, after the Lord do what he got to do to you, after the Lord beat you, after the Lord chastised you, after the Lord rebukes you, Mm-hmm. Because what is going on, it do not feel good. But afterwards, you see, you'll get start getting some sense. You get some wisdom about what happened. And then you can be happy about it. Uh-huh. Then you can be happy about it. Because the Lord showed you the right direction to go in. But it would be grievous. Nevertheless, afterward, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. My God. See, if we take the chastisement of the Lord, the rebuke of the Lord, amen, uh, the, the Lord telling us what to do, what not to do, direction of going, um, doing what he has to do. You know, sometimes you got to bring those beatings, amen, to line you up with the word. All right, but it's going to bring forth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. It's going to bring forth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. And that's why we ought not to despise the chastening of the Lord. Amen. We should be grateful for what God, when he chastised us. Amen. And try to make sure that the next time, amen, he won't need to do that. That's what we want to do. Try to make sure that the next time, he won't need to come by and do that. Amen? We want to be followers of Christ. We want to follow him in the straight and the narrow way. Alright? And if we're going to follow Christ and he's going to be our perfect example, then we need to get in the word of God and see how Jesus handled the situations that he dealt with. Because how can I follow if I don't know the direction? If I don't know where you are, it's impossible to do that. I got to line up with you. I got to keep my eyes on you. I got to see you. I got to focus on you. I can't let you get around the corner. And I'm like, where did it go? All because I got distracted. You got to kind of stay up on him. You know what I'm saying? Get as close to him as you possibly can. So that you'll know. Amen. You'll know which direction to take next. If we're going to take a left or we're going to hit a right. We want to know that. We want to know it. We want to be obedient to the word. We want to live and we want to respond to the word of God. God's waiting on you. God's waiting for you to correct your ways. Uh-huh. And so a lot of times, let me tell you this. If you would only correct your ways, he wouldn't have to correct you. But when you refuse to correct your ways, being the father that he is, he'll come by and he will co correct you. Look at David. David sinned, and he sinned. He sinned with Bathsheba. He sinned during a time that kings went out. Why did he not go out? Why did he not go out at the times that the king went out? The kings went out. This was the time that they went out for battle. But he didn't go. He's at home for whatever reason. On his balcony walking and seeing a woman bathing herself. And lusting after the woman. All these wives he had. He lusted after a woman. And I'm sure his wives were beautiful. He was a king. But this woman that didn't belong to him, he want her. She belonged to somebody else. And he was insistent that they bring her to him. Now, I don't know whether she kind of wanted to fight it or she was afraid or, you know, because he was a king or she just was willing to just give in because he was a king. Maybe she figured that made her feel big or something. I don't know. But um, he slept with her nevertheless. And when he slept with her, she got pregnant. See, you can't play with the Lord because he'll pull a cover off of you. 
You try to hide it, he will uncover. And that's the truth. And they say what's done in the dark will come to the light. That's really true. People don't believe it. That's why they keep playing games. Call this up hiding stuff. You ain't got nothing from God. You can't hide from God. He see it. You need to get right. You need to straighten yourself up. Because if you don't get right, you don't straighten it up. God gonna pull covers right off of you and expose everything about you. That's how he works. Now he does try to give people chances and give them a time and space. He do that. I've seen him do it. He sends a warning before he sends the judgment. But when people keep on walking in their ways and keep walking in their ways, God keep talking, they keep on doing what they're doing, they just act like, oh, no, he ain't going to do nothing to me. After a while, it's going to come to that, that particular day, and God's going to say, enough is enough. Now I'm ready. I got this belt. And you don't want to fall into God's hands when he's angry. You don't. You don't want to fall in his hands. So, we want to turn our lives over to him in the right manner, amen, that he might have his way and that we may follow him in the right direction. We need to follow him. I'm telling you now, put your eyes on Jesus. Because if you just have your eyes on mankind, if they're not following Jesus, you're going to be messed up. Because the Bible already let us know, if the blind lead the blind, they both won't fall in the ditch. And I was already talking to y'all about those preachers, preachers and whatever that you following behind and they're not living right. You need to find somebody else if you under somebody that's not living right. Because you need to be under somebody that's living the word and follow that. And if they stop living the word, you stop following them. Amen. Well, the Bible said obey them that have the rule over you. Not in doing wrong not in sinning. You don't obey nobody when it comes down to sin. The devil is a lie. You don't obey nobody that goes against the word of God. When the leadership get out the will, then you look and say, hey, the leadership is out of the will. I can't follow no more. They sin. But as long as they follow in the word of God, they living like they supposed to, doing what the Lord tells them to do, then your job is to follow Sheep follow the shepherd. The shepherd are not supposed to be following the sheep. So if the shepherd is in the back of the sheep, something's wrong with that picture. Then it got you all turned around. You totally out of place. You got to get back in place. You, really, you need to be back in place. Because the Lord already let, let it be known. That you're the one that's standing in the gap is the one that should give an account for these people. How the way are you going to give account for the people if you're in the back? And they lean you. Get back in position. Get back to where you're supposed to be. And stop letting those people tell you what to do. If God wanted the people to tell you what to do, he would have never called you to lead. Amen. And I'm not saying don't listen to some suggestions at times about certain things, but there are other things that only God is supposed to be telling you about and letting God direct you. Because people have a whole lot of opinions, but you're the person that's supposed to be watching for their souls. And you go listen to their opinions and mess up people's souls, you're the one going to have to answer for it. You better get your instructions from above or talk to those that are higher than you to make sure that you, you understand what the Lord is saying. Amen. Amen. We truly thank God for you on tonight. Amen. And for his word, we pray that something have truly been said. Amen. That have inspired you to continue following the Lord or get on the road to following the Lord. Amen. And to keep following the Lord. And if you strayed away, to get back on track. Amen. To following the Lord. Amen. And don't stop following him. Go all the way to the end. Amen. And through the end. All the way. All the way into eternity. Following our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Amen. And we pray that, amen, you lifted your hands up and that you allow God to fill you with that tongue talk and Holy Spirit. But if you have not, amen, you still have opportunity in which to do so right now. Amen. Receive ye the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Amen. Let God fill you up with the Holy Ghost. Amen. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues, let the Spirit of God give you utterance. Amen. And you can always be baptized in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You can do it tonight. If you're home, you can't get to a church. Amen. Amen. Fill that tub up with some water. Get in that tub. Amen. And let somebody say the name of Jesus Christ over you for the remission of your sins. Amen. Get baptized. Get baptized. Get that sin washed off of you. Amen. Get that sin washed over you, off of you, and let God forgive you for all those sins. All right. According to the word of God. Amen. And we're asking, Lord, asking you all, amen, that you will be a blessing to the ministry as well. Amen. As you have received of the ministry. Amen. It's not just one sided, but we are supposed to do both parts. Amen. As you receive, as Paul said, amen, uh, the spiritual things, and you are to give of your carnal things. Amen. And we want you to bless the ministry. Amen. Go to Solid Rock Apostolic Faith Church on your Gimnify app. Amen. Amen. And of course, again, you will see me with long wavy hair. Amen. And I have on a robe. I believe it's like gold and black with some white in it. Uh, perhaps so. You'll see that. Just click on there. All right. Click on there and give your um, offering donation. You know, they have certain categories. You can click on one of them, or if you don't feel like going through that, just say donation and just go ahead, amen, and give that, amen, to the ministry on tonight. Go ahead and do that right now, amen, that God may bless you and bless you richly, amen, for helping the ministry, amen, 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 for promoting the ministry, amen. It's not just good enough that we, we ourselves sit down and eat, amen, but we also want to promote it. Amen. So that we can help fund it so that it can go further. Amen. So it can go further and do more. Amen. For Christ. Amen. At this time, I'm going to pray. Amen. A prayer for you now in Jesus' name. Father, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your healing and your deliverance in the minds and in the hearts and spirits of the people on today. Whatever their situations are, look into their lives, Lord. Heal them and deliver them. Turn things around the right direction. Oh, God, and help them to have a mind to do the will of God, to follow you according to the word of God. Oh, God, you may be well pleased and get the glory out of their lives. We ask it now in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. And we're asking that God continue to bless you and help you and heal you and deliver you. All right. And give you a special touch. And help you in this walk of life with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We want you to know that we love you, but God loves you best. Be blessed.